I'm going to be presenting the automated computer analysis of chest CT images evaluation of pleural thickening. This was really done by my colleague uh, Tony Reeves, uh, who is the computer engineer who is building this software. Uh, we got to a certain point a few years ago, and then we haven't really done much with it since then, although it could be easily revised or revived. So I just start out. Uh, and Claudia may have shown a little bit of this, that part of what he's done uh, it, in working with us is to develop a fully automated chest health analysis. Uh, and this is something, this has sort of been our dream uh, with the chest CT, is to kind of look at everything you can look at. You know, in, in, in medicine there's always been this idea that goes back and forth that, you know, if you order a chest CT for looking at lung cancer, you should only look for the lung cancer. You shouldn't look for anything else. And the sort of opposing idea is, no, no, the information's there, you got to use it. You got to use everything. And it always reminded us of uh, when you go for a blood test, you know, you can't order a sodium, you know. You get a blood test, you get a sodium, potassium, you know, whether, whatever it is. You just don't get one thing. You don't get a, and, and it sort of all happens automatically. And then once you get these numbers, there's also a range that's put next to it. You know, your glucose is this, and here's the range of normal. Here's your potassium, and there's a range of normal. And so we always had this dream of doing the same thing in the chest. In essence, a whole body health check. Or, you know, and you can check a lot of systems there. You have a lot of organs there and a lot of measures or different indices. So this was the vision and this is sort of where we're at. And some things we can do very nicely. You can see the airways and we can do all kinds of measurements on the airways and we can automatically get the bones and we can label the bones. We can look at uh, pulmonary artery and we can measure the size of it and the aorta and measure size. We can even get things like heart size and heart volumes, body surface, so we can get body surface areas and fat, and we can do automated analysis of the breast tissue. So lots of things we can really look at here. And, and we're always surprised to find out how many more things we can look at. Now one of the hotter topics is, is looking at the quality of people's muscle, amount of muscle and the quality of the muscle, and, and how well that's a index of a person's health. So, you know, it's just fun to see what you can really do and really give indices of people's health. Now, one of the other things we were looking at also was pleura, but here's sort of a, a and this is really only a partial list right now of the various things we can do. Um, and in addition, we can also, at the same time, we can measure the quality of the scan. We can automatically say, this is a really good quality scan or hey, this scan had too much noise in it because the dose was too low and our measurements are a little bit less accurate. Uh, those are the things. I didn't mention coronary artery, calcium scoring, pulmonary hypertension, aortic aneurysms, all of these things. It's just a huge list of things. And we now have most of this automated so that when we get a scan, we can run the software on it right away and it produces these big printouts of, and it takes, you know, 40, 45 minutes to go through its paces and give us our sort of health check. Uh, this is sort of one of the formats of how it's going to look. Heart health, image quality, lung health. And so, so that's sort of where we're heading. And we haven't completed this. This is not an easy thing to do. This is actually where the big challenge is, getting this getting that normal and what your range is and where you fit on that bar. Uh, because scanners are a little different, you know, not every scanner is calibrated the same way. So there's, there's a lot to do there still. But this is the sort of exciting part and this is the part we're going to try to work with the FDA to really get this down because then you're going to get a really a complete health check. And I think this is in some ways going to be transformative in medicine. That this is just going to be every case now. You're going to get this kind of, and we think every CT scan should have something to this effect going on. So let's move on to, to the Libby cases. And this is a particular subset of patients. 
These are the patients that have pleural disease. And as Claudia had alluded to, there are different criteria. The criteria that's used in Libby includes a younger subset and lower smoking history than the traditional Medicare reimbursement. They, in essence, are following the NCCN guideline, which is 50 years and older, 20 pack years and older, plus one other risk factor. And the other risk factor can be occupational disease or occupational exposure. So here, all the patients have evidence of pleural disease based, I guess, on a chest x-ray or a, another CT scan they had previously. And in this situation, I just pulled a case, and this is, you know, here's a plaque. And this is, you know, kind of your typical asbestos plaque that I see. And in this case, this patient, I'm not showing all the scans, but they're loaded with these kind of plaques, some bigger, some have chunks of calcium in it. And this is your typical, and so as I say, these cases, I see a lot of what looks like your typical asbestos-related pleural disease. And here you can see there's a parenchymal band here. Um, you know, lots of your asbestos, asbestosis kind of findings that you're starting to see in these patients. Now, what Brad and, and we talk about with the, this sort of other syndrome is this much more subtle plaque. You know, these kind of very, you know, and this is, is a real trick, finding this kind of very thin pleural disease here. Very difficult to see. And, and this is where we get into some challenges with really understanding whether it's even really pleural thickening or as the opponents of, of Libby will say, this is all <coughs> subpleural fat or muscle or something. You know, they don't buy that it's, uh, and, and it's not easy. This is, you know, some of this is very thin um, and you have to really start understanding how to interpret it because where the muscles end, where they attach to the ribs, how you can differentiate whether it's fat or not fat. And, and it's subtle. It's only a couple of pixels thick and low dose screening has to be low dose. And you can see this kind of graininess. I mean, that just happens because of the low dose. It makes it harder to read. So building what I'm heading to in all this, it's harder to build software that finds this stuff reliably and measures the density of it reliably. This is, this is not easy stuff. And that's what Tony was working on and where we had kind of gone. So as he says, difficult to measure automatically uh, when it's adjacent, especially to other soft tissue. It's not always, you, all, you don't always have the rib right there to sort of have this very dense stuff and less dense stuff. It's easier to find it. Um, he developed an automated algorithm, which is a set of tissue thickness measurements are made where the pleural surface is closest to the surface of the rib. And I'll show you how uh, we attempted to do this. So this is, uh, you know, this is all automated, and he finds the rib surfaces because you have the innermost intercostal muscles, which are between the ribs. They connect the ribs, and they don't go across the surface of the rib. So they go from here to here, from here to here. They don't go across. So there's a point where there's just rib, some fat, and some pleura. There's nothing else. And if you see something else there that's thicker, then it's either subpleural fat or it's pleural thickening. And so what we decided to do was find these points along this part of the rib, start measuring points here along the rib surfaces and start measuring thickness there and try to get some idea of the densities, whether it looks like it's fat density or soft tissue density and see, you know, if we could start to measure. And you can see, so here's where we're doing it and uh, this is sort of, I guess he's outlining where rib is and then we're measuring in, these air, in, in this area here is where we're sort of trying to measure these thicknesses. So we now try to come up with these sorts of measurements and he takes all these points and he shows the distribution of the thicknesses and this is what he's doing. So he's, this is sort of a mild pleural disease. I guess here's your measurement. He gets a mean with a standard deviation, a mean with, and this is with moderate thickness and this is severe thickness. And you can see how much is 
in this sort of larger size. I should say here is the larger size. How much is sort of thicker? And you can start seeing, so we look at the distribution, and that's the basic idea that we're doing. We're looking at the distribution of the thickness between the rib and the lung. That's what we consider sort of soft tissue or pleura along each of those points, and we plot these distributions. And you can see as you get to severe, you start getting many, many points that are thicker. Here's moderate, and here's sort of mild. And that's been our basic approach to doing this. So that's the way we've sort of started to do this. And this is kind of where we stopped about uh, a year or two ago. Um, although we can revive this. And, and that's really where we're at right now with the, the imaging. So I'll conclude it there.